thoughts on overall maybe tempo, how the offense is looking so far? Yeah, it's been good from the tight end perspective. The guys are competing. Um, you always got to get acclimated to the heat the first couple of days, which uh, our guys have done a nice job. It's been – we're battling through. Uh, obviously, you know, Trey's put on some weight and looks good and um, came back in good shape. And, you know, just got to get used to the heat. Same with HUD and Bax and Tyrus are all doing a really good job and the young guys. How is Trey handling that added weight? I mean, can you tell the difference? Yes, sir. And when you see him, you can tell. Like, when he walks through the door, he looks like – uh, what a tight end is supposed to look like. And you got to give a lot of credit to Jamil Walker and his staff. He's as good as any strength coach in America. And when you come from pro football to college football, you always hear the stories about how important the strength coach is. And you don't know until you get here and you see how much time they spend with those guys. So the strength staff deserves a ton of credit. It's a huge reason why we win. And those guys have done a great job. And Trey making the right decisions and doing the right stuff. Spring before last, like 18 months ago, he was 205. Oh. It's like 40 pounds in 18 months. <laughs> Is that difficult to do? Yeah, I mean, I do it the wrong way. So I can't, I only talk about the bad weight I gained, but Trey's put on good weight and looks good and moves well. And, you know, it's uh, it's a tribute to the kids' work ethic and our strength staff and Julie, our nutritionist. They've done a great job with them. And it, it is a commitment. And it's not just from a, like, hey, you put on weight, but you have to change your mindset. You go from playing wide receiver that you don't have, like you have to block, but you're out there on the edge and you're not, you're blocking people that are your size compared to now you're coming in, you got to block defensive ends and you got to block on the second level linebackers, but it's a mindset. And that's where the mental toughness comes in. And it, it's not for everybody. Not everyone can make this transition, but Trey's a, a mentally tough kid. He's physically tough. And that's what it's allowed him to make that transition. We we're talking with Sam the other day about uh, Jaden Hazelwood and how highly recruited he was and um, how he, you know, he kind of feels like he hadn't quite lived up to that and ready to prove himself. Hudson kind of in a similar vein as that, really highly regarded as a recruit and stuff, but it's had some injuries and things like that pop up. Is there any sense that you get from him that he kind of feels that too? I think Hudson's the ultimate teammate, and uh, his concern is doing what's right by the team. Obviously, he wants to play like everyone else, but his focus right now is improving himself. And uh, I've told him multiple times, you can only control what you can control, and everything's going to be earned in our room so you want more play time you've got to earn it and we've got a good group in there and they're all competing Hudson's doing a nice job he has the advantage of being intelligent he comes from a great uh, lineage and DNA in his family and go of good football players and now he's got to come make it on and do it on his own and and make it in which he's doing a good job hey with I don't know last year with Trey you know he moved early I think it was after the opener yes sir. and I know you guys were having to do extra work and getting ready for opponents and all that what How's he done just with his total evolution of the position, not just weight gain, but just now he's had an off season and a summer and now you're in camp. How's that evolution been for him? It's been, well, it's been good. And it, it's been a pretty smooth transition because he's so intelligent. You guys have talked to this kid. He's highly intelligent. He's going to be successful after football. He's going to be successful in life because he's a conceptual thinker. He wants to know the why and everything, everything we do, why you take this step, why it's important to have your second step in the ground. And he get the advantage he has coming from the wideout room being a conceptual thinker is he knows what all five guys are supposed to do. He also knows where the ball is supposed to go based on coverage, which also creates a problem for me in my room when he's like, Hey, that's cover four. That ball should be going to me. And all of a sudden it goes to Hazelwood, you know? So he's a, just a football intelligent guy. He's got high IQ and that's, what's made the transition on top of the mental and physical toughness easy because he does have football intelligence. And then the overall depth in the room, it seemed like last fall, you guys were moving guys and they get hurt or something would happen. And, you know, Sam, what we, you know, when, when Dax said he couldn't play football anymore, Sam said, Hey, we still got plenty of depth. How, how do you feel about the depth? Overall? Well, you know, uh, Dominic, no one knew who Dominic Johnson was. So he spent two weeks on the tight ends and we moved him back to running back. You know, everyone forgets that, that he came over with us, but uh, the room has done a good job um, just competing and, and really focusing on themselves and learning the offense and what they have to do inside the offense. It's easier for me in year two, knowing what this offense asks of this position to be able to teach better and have those guys have a better understanding of what's asked, what skill set they need, what where we have to improve and what our strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah, I'm curious what kind of a, a, a response you saw from Hudson the last couple of days since since day one didn't didn't finish it. Yeah, this same the response I would expect from any of our tight ends, and that's to come in and do your job. Like this <clears throat> football's hard. And everything's earned. And, you know, we, we had an issue uh, physically with him that he has overcome and done a nice job. And it, I, I can honestly tell you this, and this isn't coach talk, and this isn't me sitting up here trying to make something. What This kid honestly cares about the team more than himself. 
And that doesn't happen much in this world at, at this time and in the uh, age of instant gratification on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. He legitimately wants to do what's best for the team, be a good teammate and serve in any role he can find that helps the football team. I guess just uh, what are your impressions been of, of Tyrus Washington? Kind of what, what excites you about him? Yeah. Um, here's what, here's where we hit on Tyrus. He's got the right mental makeup. He's a tough, competitive South Georgia kid. He comes in, he works. Football is very important to him. He has a passion for football. He is very eager to get on the field in any way he can, whether it be special teams, tight end. Um, he's, he's picked the right people to associate himself with and follow and listen to. I see him on the side asking Trey and uh, Bax and HUD questions all the time. He's that guy in the meeting room that always has questions. He's the guy that I get texts from saying, hey, can I come over and talk about you know, signals or plays, and he wants to know the why. And it's, it also helps because the standard of intelligence in the room is so high. He knows what he doesn't know, and he knows he needs to catch up to get in the rotation to compete for a spot, and that's what he's done a great job of. I've heard Sam mention that South Georgia deal before. Is there a significance to that? I only recruited for like six months. So, like, when I'm down there, they're tough physical kids, and they're competitive. And from day one, that's what we what I've seen with Tyrus. Yes, you um, Back in the spring, I heard a couple of people make comparisons to Blake Kern. Is, is, how are they similar? How are they different? I, I think they're similar in the fact that I don't like comparisons, but I'm going to answer the question this way. And um, they're similar and they're very consistent. And they're, they're team first guys. You know, they obviously Kern and Bax have Bax earned a scholarship as a walk on. You guys know this. It, it's hard to earn a scholarship as a walk-on. And we're going to do everything in our, in our power to give these scholarship guys the first look, the second look, till somebody – you really earn – when you earn a scholarship, you earn it. And that and he just keeps his head down and keeps working and doing the right stuff. And that's kind of – Kern played the long game. And when I got here, you know, it's kind of like, oh, we had the Kern kid. And then Kern had a really solid year and got in some NFL camps and got a look and opportunity to do, which is also very hard just to get into that camp. And that's why I would say Bax is similar. Like he has the same makeup. He's dependable. He's smart. He's tough. He's going to do the right thing. He's a guy that we can trust on and off the field to be an example for the younger guys. And that's the standard. He's never had a target in a game, but when you watch him out here, it seems like he's got pretty sure hands. How much do you think he can factor in as a receiver? Yeah, he's a, he needs to keep doing a good job, keep working. Uh, he does have good hands. And if you just keep doing the, doing this stuff the right way and be fundamentally sound and play when your opportunity is called, you make the most of it. So, you know, at the tight end position, sometimes your stat line doesn't tell how well you play because – you don't control where the ball goes. The coverage does. And sometimes, you know, there you're not in the game when the tight end, uh, when the tight end, you know, is the number, his number is called, but I do believe that he'll be a guy that can help us when, if he is in the game and he's competing for us and the, his number's called, I think he'll go out and execute and do his job. You touched on recruiting a little bit. Probably the last time before this, you've been a recruiter, I guess it's probably a player host. Player host and maybe the, uh, my wife. Yeah. Outside of that. Well, it seems like you're doing a pretty good job with, with everything. <laughs> um, I guess just talk about your approach to recruiting and, and how you have adjusted. Yeah. Some of you guys know me since I was here as a freshman when I was 17, 18 years old and 18 years later, I'm back. And it's, I think it's number one, being a straight shooter. And I kind of learned this from coach nut is you got to find out what you offer and what this player is looking for and make sure that they understand that we can give, we can provide this better than anyone else. And that's sometimes the way we treat you and the way you're going to be coached. And I think that you earn trust through people from being consistent and doing the right thing. And the, you start to build relationships that way. And I've, I look at all that as we're just building relationships. I don't, I don't like to use the word recruiting. It's build relationships and make sure that, all these places have great facilities. All these places have great fan bases, but I don't think anyone can sell this place like I do because I believe everything I say to these kids about the University of Arkansas because I lived it. And this is always where I wanted to come to school. So I hope that every kid that I talk to feels my passion for this place because I believe with all my heart, it's not recruiting. I'm telling you everything we have, which is really special. And it's somewhere, someplace you want to be. How was that getting out on the road for the first time in the evaluation period? And, and what all the territories do you hit? So I have a lot of big part of Arkansas, tight ends nationally, the state of Oklahoma, 
And then I trickle into North Dallas, which isn't really my area, but I like to go down there because I'm from there. And so I tag along with Shear a lot um, to get down there. And um, <clears throat> that part's been fun. And it's, you take everything you've learned in the NFL about critical factors and evaluating positions and male makeup, and you get to apply it to recruiting. So it's not just, there's a recruiting aspect, a solicitation part of it, but there's also the eval part. And it's the critical factors and the things you look for at each position is, and I, I've always enjoyed the draft process and, and being an offense coordinator for four teams, like, I was looking at the whole board. I'm evaluating 150 kids instead of just the tight ends or the quarterbacks or wide receivers. So I think that's helped me a, a ton as well, understanding what to look for, what's important, and you know, years of spending time at the combine and, the, and how important the numbers are. And sometimes it's not just picking the player, it's eliminating the guys that you don't want and can't play for you. And it's a it's evaluation plus solicitation and building relationships. So it's been fun. Like I've obviously never done this in my life and uh, it's been exciting. It's different, which has kind of given me a certain energy and it's competition, which I love. I love the fact that we get to go compete against the best of the best and see if we can win. And that to me is what fires me up and makes it's my why when it comes to recruiting. Yeah, uh, but Tyrus Washington was here in the spring, you know, he's, so he's been here a little while. How's he coming along progressing with his part of the game? And then Aaron Alley was a kid that was highly recruited, came in, was hurt, Alex, yes, sir. you know, whatever last year. We know about that. Just how's he coming along to yes, sir. Um, like I said, to Tyrus, he's he's very inquisitive. He's gonna ask all the right questions. Being here in getting here in January has obviously helped him going through spring football. And one of the cool things about this place is following the Georgia model, how much time these guys spend together on football in the summer. I think we had 16 summer workouts where these guys are on Tuesdays and Thursdays are throwing and they're with each other and they're uh, in meeting rooms and doing those things, which is very unique. We didn't have that when I was here. Like when, when coach Nutt and his staff left in May, I ran seven on seven until for Matt and Tavares and Sorehan and those Zach Clark and those guys until coach and the, we came to the camp, but now it, football never really stops. And he's benefited from that because he does things the right way and football is important to him. And he's going to, he understands that, for him to compete, it's not going to be the physical. It's going to be the mental. Can we trust you to get on the field and, and help us prepare the right way? And then Aaron's been a guy that's battled some injuries. Great kid, um, Little Rock kid. And he's, you know, he's getting to the point he's gotten in better shape. You know, when he, when he hurt his knee, um, the conditioning aspect uh, regressed a little bit for him. But going back to Coach Walker, Coach Walker and those guys have gotten him in great shape. And he looks better than he has since I got here. And He's, you know, battling through the knee. So it's opportunity and making the most of your reps. So, you know, he's got an opportunity to compete. Um, he's not in that top group of players right now, but that doesn't mean he can't earn that. And, and get in that group through, I think we have 26, 27 days till we play a game. Back to recruiting. Uh, you've got a pretty big group on campus right now with the, the COVID year. I think everybody knocks could come back next year. You've got a big group already committed. Yeah. How does, what are the challenges like recruiting beyond you know, 24, 25 classes, when you've got that kind of numbers crunch, you got the portal, what are those challenges like navigating those? Like I, to me, it's the, there's obviously going to be challenges that come up, but it's right now in this moment, it's the, we're focused on our 23 class. We'll progress to the 24 class. And, and it's also making sure that we're treating and coaching these guys the right way. So if it is an option for someone to come back, that they feel good about coming back and they want to come back. And that was part of a little bit of the challenge with Trey. Like Trey has to make a decision. Hey, I'm going to go play tight end or do I want to go play receiver somewhere else in the, in getting this, the portal. And, you know, to the credit to the staff before me and the relationships they create and the, obviously Trey and I have a very, very good relationship and I really enjoy coaching him. And, you know, it's, Look, the, the, all this stuff can be handled with how you treat people, being honest um, and being clear, like your expectations of like, this is where you need to improve. Now it's on you and I to go do this and improve. And I think as long as there's constant communication and everyone knows where they stand, then I think everyone feels good about, you know, the relationships they have and their opportunity to compete. And that's the, the one thing to, that helps us is we two spot. And it's the, it's the best thing. I think we win because our strength staff and the way we play, and the way, excuse me, the way we practice and our, the practice builds toughness along with Coach Walker and his staff building mental toughness and physical toughness and getting these guys ready to play. But this two spot, like to Otis's point, Aaron Alley's getting reps. So he's not standing on the sideline. And we get to go back and we get to evaluate him every day with the other eight or nine tight ends we have. And that makes such a huge difference because 
a lot of times it's three or four people getting reps. And these kids don't understand how lucky they are to have two spots, to actually have tape available. And that's the only way to get better is to go do it. So I think that's another advantage we have here is the way we practice. And now the SEC West is a little bit of a different beast than when, when you were a player. I mean, every game last year against your division rivals was super competitive, hot game. Why How different do, than when I was a player? Well, some of the programs have come up. Uh, some of them have gone down too. Well, all right. Tougher in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> now, how does Arkansas, you think, go from nine wins to challenging for the top? Well, you get, we have to build a, a team that plays consistent to the, the best of their abilities. And obviously that starts with recruiting and getting the right kids on campus, the right mental makeup kids, the kids that fit Arkansas, they have that chip on the shoulder to play hard and it's development. And to, I've said that this will be the third time I think I've referenced coach Walker and the way we practice and it's everyone buying into the aspect of getting better every day. And you're competing against yourself to be the best player you can be. And when you have a team that buys into that, I've, I was a player, got the chance to go to Atlanta and go to the SEC championship game. That's kind of why I got after you a little bit about, you know, Coach Saban was at LSU as well too then. And, uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's all those things. It's, it's a million little things of doing the right thing all the time and building trust amongst the team and building accountability. It's harder than ever to hold the team accountable and to build trust on the team and to get your football right. And the easiest way for me to say this is you get the right people, you create the right environment, you develop your people. That'd be the simplest way to say it. And that's really, really hard. It sounds easy. It's like, hey, we do these three things, but it's really hard and it takes time. Now, with your, um, I mean, you're obviously new to college football from a coaching standpoint, but you know, a lot of the coaches call the portal free agency. You, I mean, you dealt with free agency. In the it's free agency without rules. Yeah. And there's no salary cap. <laughs> that's the difference in the NFL is there was – it opened up one day and you geared up all this time. And you knew like, Hey, his contract's running out, his contract's running out and you're gearing up. So you had a chance to have a game plan and then it, it shut down at a certain point. And so, and you're working guys out, it's different. And there's the, the cap there's, you can, and you can also the, in the NFL, you can cut a player, find a player, you know, which is uh, from, um, you know, from them picking the right players. Like you also had that in your back pocket to get people to, you know, to do the right stuff. And that's what makes, you know, picking the right people makes it, it's harder now because you do have a, a, tra a transfer portal that we have people that that's all they do all day is look at the transfer portal and just keep hitting refresh on their computer and just keep looking. And then all turns into, it's a little bit like free agency without rules. And it's like, Hey, let's evaluate this guy or Hey, who watched this guy when he was in high school? And that's why you have to evaluate, you have to re recruit and evaluate your area as well because you're building files. It's like in the NFL, a kid would get drafted and we did a lot of homework on him, but like we also knew we had to continue to study him and why you have to evaluate everyone at the combine is because at some point free agency, like you're going to have to make a decision on him and you want to know about his character and you want to know that if he fits your, like your mold and your critical factors. And so there is some correlation in that. And it's also, you know, now you live in an NIL world and all these other things, which is not free agency whatsoever yeah sorry and let me get you all revved up there no I'm um, sorry. Yeah, that was a good answer and then with trey um i mean with your nfl background i mean how would you i mean how would you evaluate him as a tight end prospect for the pros and how do you think he's carrying the extra weight you know so, so trey's biggest thing which i've told all the tight ends and especially if you have desires to play in the nfl at that position you're really either a y a true Y, which the current like current was, you're a sub YF, which is like the Jordan Reed type players, the Kyle Pitts type players, or you're a three. And a three, you better be able to play Y and F. And what's the most important, unless you're Kyle Pitts in the NFL or Delaney Walker or Jared Cook, some of the guys we've had in the past from Mike Gasecki, you better be able to play on special teams. So Trey, who is a good special teams player, also understands the value now of why that's important, why it's important for when scouts show up, they see him doing these drills because they're going to want to know. There's a, It's a 53-man roster, not 85 scholarship plus oh, 110. Like It's 53 plus 10 on the practice squad. So now your special team's value is more important than it's ever been. And if you can play tight end at his size and move like he does, 
and show special teams value, it obviously increases your NFL value. I think that's been a selling point for us with Trey as well and kind of like dangle the care for him of, hey, if you can play these special teams and these particular roles and put stuff on tape, as you're helping the University of Arkansas football team, you also increase your own value. And by increasing your own value, you increase the team value, which I think Trey, I think once you once he realized that, I think that his buy-in went up because he understands like, hey, I'm going to help the team and myself. So this makes sense for me to want to play in as, as many special teams as I can because it helps the football team and my NFL value. It's a little off the wall question, but I wonder how much are you as assistant coaches coached up on a day to day basis by by the head coach? As far as as far as you know, what practice is going to look like? Just yeah, day to day. I think one talking of the, the other day about he met with you guys Thursday night yeah. in an expectations meeting. Just if, if you could give us some insight into he that. does, and I'll give you guys a little background. And I don't know how much of this stuff we're supposed to talk about, or not, but um, I think what coach, yeah, what coach Pittman does a very good job of is he has a vision for what he wants his football team to look like. And as a head coach, you're accountable to get that vision. So this is the way he does it with us. Like you, if I, I'm going to tell you guys this, the whole state of Arkansas know what he wants to look. He wants it to be hardworking, tough, loyal. So you see his imprints on this thing. And what he does with us, he watches every one of our individuals. And this meeting is brutal in the morning. We, we met at 730 this morning. And he's watched every one of our individuals, every position coach on the staff, Defense meets at 7. We meet at 7.30, and we're asking everyone on the staff, hey, what was his mood like? How's it going? Are we good? Like, and we're asking questions. But coach is going to make sure we're going to be a, f- a fundamentally sound football team, and that's the way he does it. i would never been – coach when I was in Dallas, Coach Barcells watched the team tape as a whole staff, which I'm sure Coach Pittman did at uh, Georgia with Coach Smart. But Coach Pittman allows us to watch it as uh, offensive and defensive staff but he still keeps um, his he, – he's going to keep us fundamentally sound because he's going to make sure that our individual – our drills show up on tape and that we're teaching the right stuff and, and that he has a good feel for both sides of the ball. And I give him a lot of credit at that point of – I haven't seen that since I left Dallas. Uh, and that was 17, 16 years ago. And I think Coach Pittman, that's really where he puts his fingerprints on this team. And I think that's why we're a fundamentally sound team because there's a standard and he holds us accountable to that standard. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you guys.